Assalamualaikum. Hello and a warm welcome. You're watching the Big India Today Editors Roundtable. The Indian government sending out a missive to all netas and bureaucrats asking them to stay away from any Tibetan celebration that involves the Dalai Lama. This after years of in going and participating in various functions in places like Dharamshala, Delhi and elsewhere. Now a lot of those functions being moved to Dharamshala. The question is is the Modi government cowering before Beijing? What is the need to do so? Is this a change in Indian position? Because the Ministry of External Affairs insists it's not. Why are BJP Neta suddenly wary of embracing the Tibetan cause? Joining me in this debate, I want to first begin by introducing our strategic affairs editor, Gaurav Savant. Uh, flanking him is sharing Shun Zoom. She's an associate fellow at the Institute of Chinese Studies. Welcome, ma'am. Also with us is Shrikant Kondapali, Professor of Chinese Studies at the Jawaharlal Nehru University. My colleague in India Today magazine, Sandeep Onitan. Sandeep, welcome. Amit Malviya represents the BJP as its national spokesperson. Uh, we saw earlier today Madhu Kishwa put out some very, very strong comments. We requested her to come out and join us in the India Today Editor's Roundtable. Thank you, ma'am, for joining us. Vijay Kranti understands the Tibetan cause, India's association with Tibet better than most people in this country. Welcome, great to have you with us. Also with us at this time, representing the Congress is Jaivir Shelgil. One special guest joining us uh, from outside, senior fellow at the Institute of Defense Studies and Analysis, Ambassador Punchok Stopdan, Mr. Stopdan, welcome. Let's take a look at what's happened first, because an uh, official circular went out from the highest levels in the Modi Sarkar asking officials to stay away from any celebrations involving uh, the Tibetan cause to mark the anniversary. Now the question of course is why was an official circular sent out? It's being said that at this time in particular India's relations with China are very very sensitive. On the issue of Tibet India's relations with China have always been sensitive. So what is it that the Modi government is talking about? Let's take a look at the kind of backlash and response ever since this missive went out. It's a move that has raised political and diplomatic eyebrows. The Modi government has red flagged events to mark 60 years of the Dalai Lama's arrival in India forcing the Tibetan government in exile to shift two big functions out of Delhi to Dharamshala. While it could be easily seen as a snub to the Dalai Lama to please China, the Tibetans are being generous about it. We have a program in Delhi, a big program where we have invited the fallen Dalai Lama. And now we have shifted that venue to Dharamshala. What we are here today is because of the support uh, of the government of India. Good, the good relations between India and China will really help in solving the Tibetan issue. The Foreign Secretary in a letter advised senior leaders and government functionaries to stay away from all Dalai Lama events. Officially though, it insists that there is no change in India's policy towards Tibet's spiritual leader. With tension still brewing on the border with China, particularly in Doklam, the government's decision to shun Dalai Lama's events is being seen as both controversial as well as an exercise in real politic. The Dalai Lama, who has called India his home for six decades, has so far said nothing about the government's decision. The Tibetan government in exile is pragmatic, saying it understands India's diplomatic compulsions. With Geeta Mohan in Delhi, Bureau Report, India Today. Now, the Ministry of External Affairs has put out an official note saying that there is no change in India's position on Tibet and that religious activities can still uh, be practiced and that there is no bar that's been imposed by the Modi government. Yet, there are those who feel that this is at a variance with India's past position. I want to go across to Madhu Kishwa first. Why do you feel that India, in some senses, is letting down the Tibetan cause when the Modi Sarkar tells its officials to stay away from the anniversary celebration? India is also letting down the Indian people who do not wish to see the Modi government capitulate in this supine manner vis-a-vis the Chinese. Because this is never paid off. This is Nehru 
uh, time blunder being repeated time and again. And we know that China has never, it has never stopped China from harming yeah. India. Yeah. It has never stopped China from arming Pakistan. Yes. It has never stopped China from uh, actually supporting even terror groups that Pakistan has unleashed on India. China's friendship is something we cannot count for. They have repeatedly stabbed us in the back, even with regard to Security Council. India, in fact, pushed China's case in the Security Council way back, Nehru time. And now they are the biggest stumbling block. So it's not even as if we are able to win their friendship. But even if we could, the Tibetan cause, if you ask me, I think is a sacred cause. What China has done to but Tibet is point. a crime <laughs> against humanity and it's a genocide of sorts, cultural sense genocide, population genocide and a very tyrannical regime. Mm -hmm. And if India will not stand for Tibet and the Dalai Lama, who I think is the best ambassador of India globally, what he says and the, the way he communicates India to the world, especially its ancient civilization, especially the values it has stood for, nobody else does it as well. And, Chi and Tibet, mind you, also is the repository, the biggest repository of our classical heritage. Sure, let's they build on it one by we, one. We, we, we spit on their faces. There have always... No, but I'm saying, Rahul, this is an insult. It's not even done in a sophisticated manner. You do not insult one of the most respected, peaceful figures in the world in this manner. Okay. You don't Amit do it. Amit Malviya, you don't respect one of the most peaceful, spiritual, revered figures in the world when you have PK Sina sending out an official emissary to all government offices saying stay away from the Dalai Lama, stay away from the Tibetan cause. You know, Rahul, it's important to understand that India's position as far as Tibet is concerned and as far as Dalai Lama is concerned hasn't changed one bit. Oh. He's still mm. the leading spiritual figure. We all river. Tibet's government is there in exile. It is very much uh, an establishment that we welcome. And therefore, there is no change in how we perceive Tibet or the Tibetan cause. But we also have to recognize that India has recognized Tibet as part of China oh, and that's not hey, been done now. You don't it's have to been, keep repeating it. I know, but you see the fact is that governments are in continuity and no. Jawaharlal Nehru did admit but in to everything else, you're Tibet going against as Jawaharlal part of China. Nehru. The Nehru now, legacy, this you want to demand it everything, but not where no. it's at its most harmful but worst. Amit Malger, but see, the fact is, if the Congress party or if then Prime Minister Manmohan Singh had done something similar, if the then cabinet secretary had sent out such a missive, the BJP in opposition would have been crying blue murder, saying yes. this is yeah. a betrayal of the Indian cause. Now in government, you're seeking to justify it by citing the same continuity you seek to break in every other sphere. No, yes. Rahul, the yes. fact is that our government has reopened dialogue with China. Mm -hmm. It has researched oh. the terms of engagement. We've seen in the past how several skirmishes on the border, including the much talked about uh, Dolam, uh, standoff last year was dealt very differently from what we've seen in the past. So there is a great deal of resetting of uh, expectations and engagement with China as far as this government is concerned. And I think this particular decision of the government to I, sort of no, allow no, no, the no. exile government to, <laughs> no, no, to no, continue no. with its celebrations I mean, in Dharamshala, the which is where they are actually based, which okay. is where they Let's recognize that they One existence. by one, because Vijay Kranti, yeah. the fact also is that when it comes to national interest, you need to also be pragmatic. Yeah. We saw what happened when the Dalai Lama went to Arunachal Pradesh from the 4th of, the, uh, from 4th of April to 12th April last year. The Modi government backed him. That was followed by a lot of hostility in yeah. places like Doklam. So when we took on the Chinese, there were consequences. You've got a new foreign secretary at the helm. Is he just being cautious by saying stay away? Or no. do you believe this is no, a betrayal of the see, cause? See, I've been watching uh, the Tibetan situation uh, since 1972. It's more than 45 years. One running thread throughout this whole game is that our politicians may think they are very smart. But ev on every sensitive <laughs> moment, Mm. Uh, this class called the Babus, they take over. They supersede everything else and it is their vision which starts functioning on the, on the right moment. Whether it was the 
finalization of the so called panchashil uh, agreement it was the babu class which did it well, and only used nehru ji mm -hmm. but this time the what i see is it is not the modi government because uh, i i wish they they had remembered a uh, few years ago when the lai lama was given but how is it not the modi government <laughs> no i am saying you are no, 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 blaming the babu no no no, no. <laughs> i am not saying i am saying it is the incapability of the government to take hold of its own policy and babu is taking over this is how Jai i share with this government you know i'll give you one example of I, being weak need in front of china because what they did at the doklam plateau last year was rather audacious sending in the indian army into a third country to look the dragon in the face stay there for 73 years days yes. that's not stuff that cowards do that's a brave no, no, government no, but there is doing. one thing this is not one first time happening few years ago when dalai lama was given yeah. what you call the bharat ratna of america which is uh, american the congress uh, congressional gold medal which is the biggest award america can give to anybody on earth when he was coming to india he was being given reception at uh, india international uh, the, the 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 habitat center the same babus issued a yes. identical statement no in government leader or officer will go and visit this statement so was you're not babus have done it in the past no, the no, it, now, it was not the prime minister it was let, let, let jay vishal will come in please. let's separate the wheat from the chaff last year as you pointed out the bjp government used the lai lama as a political tool to show assertiveness qua china 31st march 2017 yeah. mr kiran rajiju's statement if i'm not wrong was arunachal government is hosting the lai lama because we are more assertive than previous governments so today not backing the lai lama yeah. or cancelling uh, this event is a clear signal bjp is buckling towards the dragon they are unable to tame the dragon now you tell me I which mean, uh, I, i didn't interrupt you J just give me a minute the problem is bjp's china policy is marked by confusion and in inconsistency in speeches they are laced and loaded with false bravado in policy today they please they are out there to please china you you remember mr kiran rajiju was not even a part of the bilateral uh, dialogue when uh, uh, they were swinging having dhokla and they gave dhokla he was not even there so here's he what present. could have possibly look, happened amit malviya you poked the dragon in the eye the dragon bit back now you're being careful look uh, rahul it's really not the case because here uh, javeed himself has conceded that our government in the past including our mos home has looked at the china uh, establishment and said that look we are going to uh, back dalai lama because he's somebody who we believe uh, is rightly the so why is the of the foreign secretary asking the cabinet secretary to send such letters there is there is also no why you becoming like that the fact is the fact is that everybody admits everybody admits look chinese premier when in the eye look the dalai lama is our honorable guest The okay the like one at a time now the fact is that we all concede that the doklam situation that was there the government of the day absolutely came out of fit shining it looked at uh, the karo, dragon in the eye me. and it gave it a message look, that you now you're telling people take this the first message bjp government is that's a look at the situation now the fact the is transgressions i'm now sorry the is there are 470 transgressions at if you are resetting 470 you know, to 200 one if, if, i don't want this to turn into a shouting match one second one second i i don't want this to turn into a shouting match one at a time let's maintain some sense and sensibility gaurav and sandeep to gaurav first what's the thinking within the indian government if this had happened under the watch of the congress party everyone would have been beating the chest and saying look at what the congress government has done manmohan singh is weak why is modi doing this it's happened under the congress government also similar circulars have gone out in the past it's the need of the r uh, that the government takes a call that's point 1 point 2 Why is it Madhu Kishwar? Madhu Kishwar said that pa China continues to help Pakistan. Pakistan today is saying that China stabbed us in the back on the Financial Action Task Force. There is always a quid pro quo in international relations. What is the quid pro quo? Well, from what my sources in the government tell me, China removed its uh, you know uh, uh, support for uh, Pakistan at the Financial Action Task Force. which is where the foreign secretary had traveled to beijing he spoke to his chinese counterpart uh, and perhaps this was the quid pro quo perhaps but listen these nothing are this nothing justifies just, it for uh, why not nothing justifies uh, national interest is more no, important no, no, your I'm national sorry. interest Tibet is pakistan is killing your people Tibet, pakistan is killing your people Tibet pakistan is, today stands isolated pakistan is very important as a terrorist country 
terror finances to Pakistan, are they important or not? Securing the freedom of Tibet as a buffer state between India and China is also national interest. It is. But we it capitulated. Is not, look, but where are you capitulating? No. Did, uh, no uh, ask, ask Mr. Vijay Kanti, did this not happen hello? in the past? But humiliating no, 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 Dalai Lama? But how is he being humiliated? No, I, I think that's not letting I, I, them I, I, hold a This is not a humiliation for Dalai Lama. It is not a humiliation of the Tibetan cause. Your cabinet the secretary is sending out an official note to no, all government departments saying stay away from the Dalai we Lama. We have to understand this that the government of Tibetan exile in India continues to enjoy the same um, privileges as it did in the past, and so does Dalai Sandeep Lama. Ponitha, what are your sources Just telling you? Is well, this a betrayal of the Tibetan cause? Why are we saying this? Rahul, you know the line uh, during the Doklam crisis that the government had given to its officials was that we will be resolute on the ground with the military and reasonable in diplomacy. This strikes me as an account, uh, as an attempt of the government trying to be reasonable and as Gaurav said, to try and drive a wedge between Pakistan and China. The two-front war that we talk of is not so much a military thing as much as it's a diplomatic reality. And here is the government trying to do, uh, you know, drive a wedge between these two countries. And like Gaurav mentioned, this FATF thing was a very, very big victory that you actually got China but on your side. Pakistan is still to, not blacklisted, they're only well, grey listed well, on the so, FATF. So neither have we done, uh, ha, neither have we put the Dalai Lama into uh, yeah, prison. Uh, we, we haven't that's precisely the point. It's, it, this there is, a, is no change look at in status as a of Dalai, Dalai Lama. Sharing, sharing Sun Zoom, what's the sense uh, that you're picking up is India steadfast in its support of the Tibetan cause? It has been in the past, or do you see the sands shifting? I think, um, I mean, first of all, I would just like to put across two points. I think uh, when I read the news this morning, just two thoughts crossed my mind. How would the Chinese be, uh, take, what the Chinese takeaway would be from this recent development? And what the Tibetans would be thinking is, usually this does not come on the table. Like, Tibetans are seen as the passive actors who really don't have a role to play in this whole equation. So I think from the Chinese perspective, they've all along been seeing that uh, the Indian government, the India has always is trying to undermine Chinese interests by using the Dalai Lama and the Tibet card. So in many senses, what's happening right now vindicates uh, the Chinese position. And the second is uh, the Tibetan people, ordinary people that I'm interacting with in many social groups, uh, social media groups. Uh, they, when the first report came out about the directive, uh, People were very uh, uh, not not very uh, open about it. When the second uh, report came out about the denial being issued, so everybody was heaving a sigh of relief, and they were like sense assur reassurance. So I had to also debate with them about you know uh, it does not really deny the directive was issued. So I think the Tibetan people in that sense felt uh, feel uh, sort of uh, let down in many senses, and um, this I think happening alongside a time when China has just uh, the Chinese authorities in Tibet have. Uh, just announced a major crackdown on not just uh, yeah, right. Dalai surrogates, that's what they're now calling it, Dalai click, but they're also calling, uh, you know, a uh, crackdown on also so-called people who are acting uh, uh, activists <coughs> working towards uh, preservation of Tibetan language and also working for in, uh, preservation of Tibetan Okay, so you're saying you know, that the Tibetan sentence, community one, is one, feeling let down. I haven't heard from Srikant Kondapali just yet. The best defense we've heard so far is from Gaurav Savant who says that this is some kind of a quid pro quo. They didn't back Pakistan when it came to financial terror funding and uh, Pakistan now stands grey listed. Three months later it could be blacklisted and therefore there's no point in poking the dragon in the eye. Do you buy that? Well, I think the, uh, firstly the uh, uh, on the circular itself, uh, I think it is a routine kind of circular. Uh, it's been issued uh, before and it will be issued in, uh, in future as well. Um, the <coughs> suggestion is that uh, in the event of a high level visit uh, from either side, remember Prime Minister Modi visited China in uh, May, June 2015. Uh, so far there has not been a bilateral visit. Uh, but China doesn't practice such precautions yeah, because yeah, when yeah, Xi Jinping yeah, came, yeah, when yeah, Modi yeah, and Xi were on a swing on the banks of the Sabarmati, face. there was an incursion oh, happening in Ladakh. Uh, true, exactly. true. The fundamental things have not changed. Fundamental things is... We are being careful, they are being not. India never agreed to Tibet as an inalienable portion of China, number one. India never agreed in any joint statements in the last six decades that Tibet is a historical part of China. It never agreed to. Meaning, Tibet possibly be a uh, part of China since 1949, PLA, uh, you know, uh, PLA movement into Tibet at that time, 1949 to 50. Uh, so, 
this the government of India still continues. So okay. I, I, I see a common that, thread. I want to understand from you, do you see this as India in some senses letting down the Tibetan cause? Uh, we just heard from Shering Shunzum, she says that the Tib Tibetan community in India is upset and feels let down or do you believe the Modi government is being pragmatic? Rahul, I think uh, it's for the first time we feel that we have a foreign secretary. Uh, till yesterday, I really, we didn't know who was running our foreign policy. And, uh, you know, there was a foreign secretary in 2014. She didn't even know whether the Tibetan prime minister was standing in the group photograph of SARC heads of states. You know, this caused a lot of embarrassment. So you can't do, do, uh, do this kind of thing as a state. Politics is another matter, state is another matter. So it's in the national interest. I think in between the China policy was hijacked by other peripheral people. And this letter by a, a foreign secretary and then through the uh, cabinet secretary is not so much to the uh, Dharamshala or the Dalai Lama. It is a message to our own people who were using Dalai Lama as a Baba, perhaps even for the electoral purposes. Uh, there are many things have been done here in this country. Uh, the Dalai Lama is another instrument for politics. So they take him wherever they feel like taking and then we, without realizing that Tibet is their core issue of China. Let it be. Now, if you, once you believe that in the, uh, one China policy, you can't play around like that. The rest of the issues like okay. NSG Vijay or wants to come some very upset with what you're saying. Yes, these Mr. are diplomatic See, issues where you can negotiate. Bureaucracy. For China, Tibet is non-negotiable. Let it so be non-negotiable for China. Let it not be non-negotiable for China. Why our own integrity should be negotiable? Why should we cow down to uh, cow out to the Chinese? They have never given us any single concession. If anybody remembers in last 70 years, they have never given any concession to India on They've any many concessions. They've yeah. taken many. They have taken. So, and here what we are doing, something very foolish I would say, whether it is politics or diplomacy or national interest. We had a great asset in our hand in the shape of Dalai Lama, who holds, who commands respect across the world. And we have converted into a liability, you know, which is shameful for our bureaucracy. Or if somebody is appreciating a foreign secretary, let us be ashamed of it. That a foreign secretary has brought shame to a whole nation. Okay. With you know, I, 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 if I may just disagree with uh, Gaurav and what the gentleman said. One thing we have to realize for China, the priority is and the greed is territory and yeah. not good relationship with India. Point one. Point two, today's incident has proven there is a big difference between government's political messaging and on-ground policy. Why are we pleasing China today? There is a 48% increase in face-off between India and China at LAC in the past one year. They have a 1.3 kilometer road built up in Arunachal, which the media reported. Twice the helicopter intruded in Chamoli. The, you saw that. You gave the example of Chinese incursion. It is saying that in our worst times, you have the Haban Tota port, you have the Nepal, you have the string of pearls in the Indo-Pacific. So today, on one hand, the government is projecting bravado uh, in public and in policy, they are bend okay. bending so backwards. What, to I'm, please what I'm going to do Why? right now is take a very quick break. The opposition is suggesting that uh, the government is bending over backwards to please China. Amit Malia wants to contest that. We'll come back with part two of the table. We're discussing the India-China relation in the context of what's happening in Doklam and in the context of uh, the cabinet secretary sending out a missive to government Babu to stay away from functions associated with the Dalai Lama. What we've seen now is Nirmala Sitaraman, Minister for Defense, put out a statement in parliament saying that uh, in Doklam, as of now, after the disengagement happened, both sides have now redeployed themselves at the face of site. Uh, the strength has been reduced. She says that there's infrastructure being built, including sentry posts, trenches, and helipads. The big question is once the snow melts in the upper reaches, what can we expect at Doklam? Remember, we stood our ground last year. Now, the Chinese have sent in massive military reinforcements. What will happen as the months wear on in this year? We'll debate that. But before that, here's a ground report filed by my colleague Jitin Bahadur Singh. Almost a year after brazenly provoking India, 
for 73 days in Doklam near Sikkim. The dragon is back to breathing fire. And this time, the confirmation of Chinese provocations come from India's Defence Minister Nirmala Sitaraman herself. Replying to a question in the Lok Sabha, Nirmala Sitaraman said that while both sides have redeployed themselves from the site of the face-off, the People's Liberation Army has undertaken construction of some infrastructure, including sentry posts, trenches and helipads. In Parliament, I have been able to give you a Please, please read it. Just last week, Subhash Bhamre, Minister of State Defence too, had said that the situation along the India-China line of actual control and border was sensitive, could possibly escalate. Along the border, we have been dominant. Our forces have been dominant. And we are very proud of that. India today has access classified intelligence inputs that reveal the true extent of the dragon's design at Doklam. Chinese soldiers are building a road just four kilometers east of the standoff site. The area where the road is being constructed falls in the Chumbi Valley and large construction equipment, Chinese soldiers and engineers are deployed there. Sources say that the road that's being built is 9 to 10 meters wide and near the road, three new helipads have also been constructed. But that's not all. About 200 to 300 meters away from the site of standoff, the Chinese army has been redeployed at Batangla, Merugla and Sinchela ridges. As summer approaches, China seems to be getting ready for another round of confrontation with India. In terms of sheer numbers, the Chinese army seems to be getting battle ready for its soldiers in North Doklam. The PLA has built over 400 men tents and over 39 two men tents. In addition to that, there are over 60 fabricated shelters, 110 bunkers, 60 communication trenches and 10 mobile towers. As China ups the ante, the Doklam issue has become a political flashpoint once again. Our preparations are complete. The question is that they have taken a step to see what our preparations are. What was the preparation for the Beijing government? We should talk about it. They say that what did the Congress in this year? They have done their responsibilities. If there is some knowledge, then see it. At this time, the Defense Minister should not stay here. डोकलाम जाकर परिस्थिति का जायजा लेना चाहिए ये राजनीति का समय नहीं है गिवन दैट द डोकलाम ड्रॉडाउन वॉज ट्रम्पेटेड लास्ट ईयर एज अ मेजर डिप्लोमैटिक विन फॉर द नरेंद्र मोदी गवर्नमेंट एंड अ डेमोन्स्ट्रेशन ऑफ इंडिया राइजिंग पार इज दिस न्यू सिचुएशन अ शैटरिंग रिमाइंडर ऑफ द इंसिडियस एडवर्सरी दैट इंडिया इज ट्रूली अप अगेंस्ट with Jitendra Bahadur Singh and Sudhiranjan Sen in Delhi, Bureau Report, India Today. So this is interesting. They've moved away from the original site at which the face-off happened, but they've come with far more troops than they did earlier. Sandeep Punitan, what's going on? Well, Rahul, the point of contention was not the Chinese presence on the plateau. They've been there for decades. The point is that they've started building a road. Now, that road was coming towards the Jamferi Ridge, which is extremely sensitive for India because it overlooks the Siliguri Corridor. Yeah. The Indian Army's contention was, we don't care what you're doing on the, on the ridge, uh, on the uh, Doklam Plateau, do not build the road. Because if you build the road, we're going to come in again and we'll stop you. So the, uh, the, the point of contention was the road. It was not so much the... Are they Chinese still building activity. the road or not? The road has stopped. As but that's because of the winter months. That's no, because of no, how no, inclement no, 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 no. the weather this is. This is what the army is saying. <laughs> they stopped the road. They've moved 180 me meters back. We also disengaged by 180 meters. We've gone into our territory. And 
the moment china starts building that road again we are going to come back and what i have heard but this time, the, the difference ground, between last time and this time shrikant kondapalli is that this time they've got far more military reinforcements than they did earlier earlier they probably didn't expect some kind of a backlash from india and therefore came in with limited forces now by various reports they've got more than a brigade strength already deployed that changes the dynamic on the ground not much uh if you have a zero based assessment of the situation uh um, you have a 33 core you have a 140 41 division uh you have also the strike core not far Much away further in, away from not Dukla. far away in panagar uh in west bengal uh the the uh, it's being built being built up um indian air force is pretty strong uh actually the indian armed forces have a tactical superiority in this region china has a strategic superiority in terms of missiles uh, and the other you know conventional weapon systems if you look at in a uh, in a objective manner i do not think india has any anything to lose in this the red lines as uh, sandeep had mentioned no road construction secondly uh, uh, the uh, the 2007 article 2 uh, in terms of bhutan's national interest protecting bhutan's national interest as external affairs minister sushma swaraj told the rajya sabha these are the two red lines we but have but gaurav and these are being followed. it's one thing to face off with china when you got a blood platoon stand facing you it's a whole different thing to face off with china when you got a brigade on the other side so that changes the dynamic does it not so that is where we'll have to see whether china would want to take the risk of risking a conflict with india yeah. where militarily we are in a very strong position there except that the ridge line is in bhutanese territory and neither bhutan nor india occupy that ridge line should china occupy that ridge line uh, at uh, gamochin uh, uh, in Jamsheri. in that area uh, jamsheri uh, in case they do that then it's a nightmare for us because then they can roll down uh, you know into siliguri corridor yeah, which is about 50 km rahul we have a tactical advantage, Rahul, we have, a tactical advantage the army, we have a tactical advantage of occupying the heights the chinese are in the valley right and as you know it's very difficult for someone a, a military force coming through a valley to uh, you know attack a force that's sitting on the heights this is exactly the siachen uh, uh, dilemma you know the pakistanis are on the lower uh, reaches and India sits on the Saltoro Ridge, and you know, Kamit Malviya. What's no. the government making of the fact that now you've got the Minister for Defence accepting in Parliament that sentry posts, trenches, helipads are being built by the People's Liberation Army just off where that con uh, con face-off took place last year? You know, Rahul. First of all, we have to look at the uh, MOD statement in totality. She's very categorical to say that they have pulled back about 150 meters. from the site of disengagement and they are now there with reduced deployment and that's also true for india as much as it is for china it's not as if we've abdicated the zone and chinese are building up their resources we are there very much and we've heard the professor talk about the uh, establishment that we have militarily in that zone another thing that we have to understand when this entire dolam crisis happened there was a lot of misreporting around it because people made it seem as if china has now come into the indian territory and we are trying to push them back the fact is that was like a no man zone which is actually a bhutanese territory and india stepped in to side with this bhutan is, this so is, can i just finish this point that i'm making you see as long as china continues to do any build up north of this uh, sinclair ridge which is there it is fine because it is their territory just like we are free to do and build up on our territory mm. and therefore let's not conflate okay, the fact is, okay. that a build up means let, let me try and put this in the context that is the, right be, the, best, the, the best the, the, the best the best the, the, the best defense we are hearing from the the best defense we are hearing from the modi government just now is as long as they don't cross our red line as long as they're in their own territory whether they want to build a bridge whether they want to build a road whether they want to put a whole brigade or even a whole uh, division no, what can one we one do one second vijay kranti and madhu kishwa is that not an acceptable argument what they do on their side we can't really help can we one thing dalai lama was going to organize within our territory they object to his presence even in border states So it's not as if they allow but us. But that's the, not just important. One second. One second. That's uh, not important. Just one second. Let me finish. But, but Dalai Lama said that Let me finish. Natural. Let me finish. And you keep on saying he's only a spiritual leader. He's only a religious leader. No, he's also the political figurehead of the resistance movement of the Tibetan people And in uh, uh, globally. He's not just a spiritual. Don't do not demean uh, the other role. Secondly, see, we also have enormous. bargaining position 
on account of the fact that India has allowed China to flood its market with Chinese goods, even at the cost of destroying Indian industrial base. And we don't even use that as a handle. I don't know why we, we okay. have to... No. Vijay no. Kanti, yeah, no. the government... Okay, 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 one second. Why Vijay don't Kanti, we use that? The government's defense is, they're on their side, they're building positions, there's very little we can do. We have explained our red line clearly. No, here, we should not go what happened yesterday or 10 days ago or 3 months ago. These are nations, uh, even years, uh, occupy no space in the history. We should not forget what is Chinese thinking on India. Yes. Let us not forget Mao Tse Tung, when he came to power, the very first statement he made as chairman of, the, uh, uh, of China, that Tibet, he, he announced that we are going to liberate Tibet. And he said, Tibet is my palm. Ladakh, Nepal, Bhutan, Sikkim and Nefa are our fingers. This is their historic statement which shows their century long agenda. And they are working continuously on that agenda. And we are arguing what happened 10 days ago or today. Yeah. I think I we, think, we, we as, a, as, think as a nation, we should uh, understand. We should also I have a Marvel. long policy. Rahul, we are, being, we are being alarmist for no reason. Huh? The fact oh, of the matter oh, is oh, that oh, is China has a certain speak. posturing that they indulge in is routinely. It it's not something that they've been doing in the last year or so. The they've been doing this for a very long time. No, no, the fact, of the, matter, no, the fact second. of the matter is, this is not we right. have to ne agree here China's whether Nepal the 28th August agreement that was uh, entered into by China, has that been violated in any way? The answer is no, it hasn't been done that. Jaivi, 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 no, one second, I can't, one second, time out please. I can't have everyone speak at the same time. Make sense, not noise. That's my motto and that's the way we like to run debates in India today. One at a time, make sense, not noise. Jaivi. Two, three points quickly. Firstly, BJP government is guilty of misleading, misrepresenting the nation on the issue of Dhokla. Rather than clarity, they've been evasive and dodgy. And I want to give you three, four dates. Last month, when the Congress government, after Colonel Vinaya came with his report, raised the issue of construction on Dhoklam, government labeled us anti-national. 24th December 2017, in Parliament, the issue of construction at Tri Junction was raised. Srimati Sushma Swaraj gave a categorical statement, there is no construction at the entire Tri Junction. Then you had the M one second MOS Defense Minister Bhamre saying the situation with China is very tense. Today no, the BJP spokesperson is saying we are I'm being sorry. alarmist without no, no, no. the cause. You but are, you I are, didn't interrupt no, no, you. Jevi, right you now you're saying noise, Jevi, quality. Okay, you can, are can, making out, out, incorrect assertions. Please, the I have the reply in front of me. Can I have complete? the reply as Why well. Why are we confusing the viewers? Can I you complete? See, the, you'll have your chance. It is important Don't show your to quote the right China, thing. not me, sir. One second. Show your you cannot misquote the MOS defense. Today the issue with Dhoklam is because the government focuses on headline management rather than crisis management. I have Subhash Bambre's uh, response in front of me. Where does he say that the situation is very tense and we are he very nervous? He doesn't say that. At the line of December 2017, Shrimati oh, Sushma Swaraj. Can I quote that for it you? Is no. It, can I say? It, he yes. say I'll read it to you. I'll read he it to you. Said the word At the line sensitive. of actual control, the situation sensitive. is sensitive, sensitive as incidents of patrolling, transgression, and standards standoffs have a potential, potential of escalation, escalation right? which, is, which is a fair uh, point to make. Are you the Congress spokesman? No, 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 the respond. fact is that you are you Shri cannot Mati mislead the debate. There is no construction Are you lead basis. yourself. One okay. second. I am only saying Properly. is history is witness to the fact whenever the BJP is busy in celebration, the enemy takes advantage. Is China preparing for Doklam 2? How did Doklam 1 happen? Shere Before Shere that, how come Kargil happened? Under their watch. Under what's their watch. Look, Doklam. One, one at a time. The Netas can't, uh, they spend their life studying India and China. Let's hear from them. Yes, Shere. I think uh, we'll also have to really understand what is China's position really in this whole thing. When we're talking about national security, how we define it. So what is China's interest really in being in Doklam? How does it see India's role How in do you world? see it? I mean, I think it's very important to understand how China perceives the situation. So there, there would be one perspective that says that India does not matter. Similarly, there would be views in India and abroad also who to, inside China who talk about Tibet doesn't matter. But I think uh, there is an uh, increasing view that uh, Tibetans have been uh, ha given the back seat in many senses. Since 2009, of course, Dalai Lama himself said that the Indian government is no longer overcautious. 
So uh, as a result of that, we saw that uh, after the new government came into power, there was a lot of, uh, you know, uh, uh, support, not necessarily in a uh, support sort of way, but the Tibetans got a lot of... Okay. Leeway. Before I conclude, I also want to hear from Mr. Stopdan on uh, your reading of what's happening at Doklam. Jaivir Shergil of the Congress says China is getting set for Doklam 2.0 and the government isn't ready. How do you see the situation? I think government was able to understand the connection between uh, the Dalai Lama and the Doklam. But I think you failed to c connect in this discussion because if you recall, Doklam happened after the Dalai Lama went to Taiwan. Uh, Tawang. Uh, that's the, that's the, now the real picture It's coming out. Now the second Doklam has been prevented because of this gag now issued by cabinet secretary in the sense that Chambling government was inviting the Dalai Lama to Sikkim this month. So now this Doklam second is uh, uh, averted. So as simple as that, because the Tibetans were trying to entangle India in their conflict with the Chinese. Final words. I am out of time. No, no, the no, government no, has given no, a clear no, signal. We are ready to compromise on our territorial issues for the sake of pleasing China. Madhu Kishwa, final words. And, and that Dalai Lama, we can't be hosted even within Indian territory. Yeah. To is me, no that is going to absolutely no, Lama. Now, shocking. As of now, he'll be in and why not? Uh, he'll be in Dharamshala for these celebrations. Why, not? why should he not be able to go to Sikkim? I think support of Tibet is in our own national well, interest. Well, 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 First of all, yeah. and civilizational interest, not no, just security. One way of concluding the whole, uh, I would say, that the problem with uh, China is we have been taking a wrong stand. We have been accepting uh, Chinese presence in Tibet as uh, yeah. uh, the, the fait accompli. Exactly. We, we should not forget along this 4,000 kilometers border between India and Tibet for last 100 years, 2,000 years, or maybe more not a single day on one inch there was ever Chinese on the other side. The, it was Tibetan currency, Indian currency, Tibetan postage, Indian postage, Tibetan police, Indian police throughout last thousands of years. Why we should accept yes. Chinese presence there once okay. we challenge. Amit once Malvi, we, I'm out of time. Once we challenge. Once we challenge. You see, as far as India and China is concerned, China's the presence. deterrence on the border remains, and that has been oh quite evidently seen by okay. lack of violence. So all the pundits. And I think that's really very, very as important the, for as, us to as understand. As Deng Xiaoping said, as he said, Prepare yourself, strengthen yourself, bide your time and then show your strength. Yeah. So we need to strengthen ourselves first even more to take on China. And remember, but we are very strong in the Indian Ocean. We, uh, India never succumbs. India does not succumb. Uh, increase defense budget, okay. get more oh. ships. Indian Ocean is where we are going to counter China and very effectively. And there will be no Doklans as long as we are strong as a nation. All the pundits have spoken. We won't take sides. It's a very contentious, divisive issue. You've heard varying shades of opinion we leave it to you our discerning viewer to decide whose opinion you believe is closest to the truth and closest to what's happening on the ground to all our guests for joining us for this india today editors roundtable making the effort of coming here thank you very much we're slipping into a quick break we'll have more news for you when we come back on the other side stay with us watching the video for more such news and updates please like share and subscribe to india today also check out our other great videos from our channel we know you would love to